Good afternoon and welcome to all our audiences from the uh, from coming from Zoom and in YouTube. So People Management Association of the Philippines, or PMAP Cebu, presents another interesting topic this afternoon, which we needed the most during these difficult times. And so in this occasion, we invited a speaker who will lead us through a spiritual journey, so stay tuned. We will start our webinar in a few minutes. In the meantime, let's check other PMAP Cebu webinars happening soon.
Good afternoon once again to our participants in the webinar. My love will see you through finding God in the midst of the storm. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this special session with our resource person. But before we start, let us pause for a moment of silence and invoke the presence of our Lord to be with us in prayer. It will then be followed by videos of Pima Cebu and Italy.
challenges of life demand that we measure up. And that's a fact IntelliCare understands and takes seriously. IntelliCare understands that the cycle of healthcare begins when you're healthy. Because we see the big picture and approach healthcare holistically, we make it possible for you to stay well, prevent illness, or catch it early on. It assures you that when you do need it, professional medical care and treatment will be available. So you can take comfort in the fact that we're managing the resources and cost of quality healthcare. Technology makes it possible for us to serve a wider base of customers online, day and night, so that we can focus on improving the numbers that really matter to us. The numbers that track your health, that drive down the cost of quality health care, that show you're in the best of health so that you can strike a healthy balance in life. A balance that's critical and necessary for a life well lived. Something we recognize and fully understand. We are the leader in healthcare management because of a delicate balance we've achieved through the years. We're grounded on a core value of compassion, yet daring enough to make groundbreaking changes. We take pride in the tradition of excellence yet always open to innovation. We're anchored in our commitment to the Filipino people, yet unfettered as we reach out to serve them better. And why do we do this? Because we believe that good, quality health care isn't something one simply aspires for. It is a constitutional right as inalienable as any other basic human right. IntelliCare, your intelligent health choice. Thank you so much, IntelliCare. And uh, IntelliCare has been our partner since day one for this e-learning platform and who has been instrumental in making this a reality. So we would like to thank our co-sponsor today, Cebu General Services Incorporated, for supporting this afternoon's webinar. Hello, everyone. My name is Bobot Godoy. I'm the Director of Human Resources of Seda Ayala Center Cebu and the 2020 PMAP Cebu Chairperson of JPMAP. I am your host and moderator for this webinar. I would like to thank the 152 so far attendees in this afternoon's webinar. So I guess you are familiar with Mentimeter. So please uh, have your phones ready. You have to uh, go to www.menti.com. And once you're there, please use the code 3423893 to join our very short Q&A. So once again, if you have your phones ready with you, go to www.menti.com and use code 3423893 to join in our very short Q&A. So let's first shout out the name of the companies here. So thank you so much, IntelliCare, King Properties, Orochina Jewelry Corporation. We have some more coming in. Aja, CGSI. Come on. DuPont is here. So once again, thank you to CGSI, King Properties, IntelliCare, Orochina, DuPont. CGSI Mabuhay, CGSI Luzon. Wow, thank you so much, CGSI. We are waiting for CGSI Tawi Tawi to come in. So, Orochina, thank you so much. Northern Lights uh, Tech Development and then Cebu General Services Incorporated. So, uh, thank you so much. So we have uh, GMR Mega Wide Cebu Airport. So we have Offsex. So we have uh, 
most number of our attendees are coming from CGSI. Okay, so we have uh, yeah, CGSI Mabuhay, King Properties, thank you so much for attending this afternoon. GMR, thank you so much. Uh, IntelliCare, DuPont, thank you so much. Offsec, Orochina, DepEd is also here. Thank you so much. So uh, come on, come on. Let your, uh, your companies be recognized. So um, that, that's, that's a pretty good number of uh, att uh, attendees from different companies here. So ingenuities here also. So Northern Lights Tech. So we go now to our next question, okay? So uh, we would like to ask you, where are you now? So please uh, give us, are you, are you in your workplace or are you at home? So let's see the, the, the numbers that we have here. Majority are in the workplace. We have 25, 28, 31, so these people are very brave to go to work in their respective office, office space. So only eight, eight people are at home. So come on, um, give us your number. Where are you now? So uh, join us here in Mentimeter. So we are now starting, the home, oh, the home people are now starting to grow. So we have 10 compared to 35 for the, for, for the office, it's going up to 36. So we can see that all our attendees are coming from the workplace. So thank you so much. So that was fun and brilliant way to engage with you even though we are apart from each other. So to proceed, let us watch this House Rules video for us to have a smooth flow of the program to allow the audience to focus on the presentation and for a remarkable learning experience to everyone. Do you feel anxious when you hear the news about more and more people die of COVID-19 every day? Or when you open your Facebook account and see some posts of your friends changing their profile picture to something black or with lighted candle, or when you learn that a relative or someone you know died of coronavirus? We might be like Peter when we walk on the water to go to Jesus but start to sink when he was distracted with the strong winds and waves. This webinar will help us understand that Jesus wants us to focus on him and not on the storm and that he is in full control. May I introduce to you our speaker for this afternoon. But before we go to our main speaker, I would like to uh, forward you to our um, RC program chair of PMAP Cebu. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Juvenir Bataikan.
so we, I think we have a technical problem here with uh, Mr. Good Junior Good afternoon. So he's here. Juve, come here. Come in. Everyone. Hi. Thank you, sir. Sir Boa. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is your technical problem for this afternoon. I hope you can hear me, sir. Boa, can can you please give me a feedback if my 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 audio is okay? It's perfect. Okay. Very good. So yeah, can you can you make it louder a little bit? I'll probably move closer. This is when. I move closer. Is that better, sir? Uh, it's still, it's, it's audible though, but yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. So, how about now? That is perfect. Okay. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your unofficial mascot for the regional conference, and I'm here to invite you once again. I've been inviting you almost every week now to join the regional conference. It's happening on October 7 to 9, and I'm taking advantage of the opportunity that a lot of you are gathered here this afternoon because nothing gathers people like love. So you're gonna be talking about love in a short while. So, and I know you're excited if love will actually see you through or false. So, but before that, I'd like to talk to you briefly about the regional conference. Our plenary one will be redesigning the talent attraction and retention experience. This is all about looking at ways to attract people, not just the usual comp band, because after this pandemic, nothing will ever be the same again. Our speaker for that topic is Mr. Daly. And I, th I think you've, you've heard him in, in last uh, two months ago. He's with the fourth, fourth wall and he's going to do plenary one. For plenary two, and this is quite a very important topic as well. We are going to talk about mindfulness the ultimate battle to stay in the here and now. And for that, we have invited once again, one of the favorites of, of PMAP, and not just PMAP, but also other organizations. Dr. Frederick Bohos is actually based in Malaysia. He will be joining us for plenary two, and he's going to do the topic as well. Mindfulness is very, very important to be always here and now. Stop worrying about yesterday and don't worry about tomorrow because what is important is now. Plenary three, is about people engagement in the time of masks and physical distancing. And this will be covered by Ms. Minchu Desena of Chongwa Hospital, and she'll be talking about that. Can you still connect? Can you still be seen or received as sincere, despite the fact that probably when you are in the office right now, you're wearing masks and face shields. So how can you get closer in terms of your, your message, in terms of the clarity of your message, with all of those blocks of physical blocks that are actually present right now. Our fourth plenary topic is reimagining the internal customer experience. It's an urgent HR domain. Ms. Nikki Abilia of Rada Consultancy is very much into customer experience, external customer experience, but he will now tailor fit the, the topic so that it applies to how we do things internally or within our organizations. Another thing that we should look forward to, and I would like you all to look forward to this, we will have our virtual fellowship. The virtual fellowship involves this question, does your team have what it takes? It's actually a group exercise and you will all go into breakout rooms and we will have a panel of judges who will now subject you to the blind audition for potentials. And this is a team competition. So if you have, now this is very important because for most of the exercises, during the exercises, the judges, the panel of judges will not see your faces, but they will only hear your voice. That voice should have the confidence, the clarity, and the right projection to get the job done. So they will pretend that they're gonna be looking for not just individuals, but teams to work for them. And so does your team have what it takes? And we will answer that during the virtual fellowship. It's really fun. and. Another gathering that we are always looking forward to is what we call as HR woke. So if you're familiar with the term woke, it's when you're not sleep. Well, the, the term is actually, it denotes awareness. Are you aware of the current social issues that are, are affecting the country today? For this, we have, a, we have a panel of experts who will talk about the critical role of HR in the social transformation initiatives. The focus will be on four areas. The first ones will be unemployment and family preparedness. The third one will be about employee activism. When people start really voicing out their concerns in social media, and of course it affects your branding because whether you like it or not, once they start speaking, 
they, they, they bring with them the brand, for example, if they're employed with you, how do you manage that? And finally, part of that will be local governance influence. How can we help our local government units in a way that it can actually be mutually beneficial for both of us, for those in the private companies or private organizations that those in the public service? So how do we influence our government leaders positively? And we have uh, a very, very good lineup of speakers for that, that we will be introducing them in the next two days. So please watch out on our social media and through your emails for the updates. Of course, and I think you've heard about it, our closing keynote, People Management in a New World Order, Something to Believe in, will be delivered by Sir Francis Kong. And I think you know him. And I think they should. I, I couldn't have any other words to say about Mr. Francis Kong. So for those of you in the practice, for those of you who've been around for quite some time, you know Mr. Francis Kong, and he will be our speaker. So until September 15, you have seven more days to avail of the special weight. It's 2,500. And by the way, for those of you who will register, you will also get a copy of this book, Finding Mr. HRD, and it's, it's exclusively available through EMAP, and it's going to go through, again, for those of you who are going to register, you will automatically get a signed copy of this book. Once again, so October 7 to 9, HR Unfrozen, The Power of Clarity, Self Mastery, and Letting Go. And so, I think, sir, our speaker is now ready to answer. If love, we'll see you through. On behalf of PMAP, Cebu, and RC20, thank you so much, sir. Robert, back to you, sir. Thank you so much, Drew. Uh, from, from Juvenile, we go to our resource speaker this afternoon. Our speaker today is a native of Mandawe City from Basak. He studied his primary education in Colegio de la Inmaculada Concepcion in Mandawe City and his secondary and tertiary education in Pope John XXIII Seminary and San Carlos Seminary College, respectively. He finished his theology in Universidad de Navarra, Pamplona, Spain and graduate studies in Master's in Philosophical Research in De La Salle University, Manila. Currently the chairman of the Archdiocese of Cebu Commission on Youth and the Assistant Regional Youth Director, Central and Eastern Visayas Region. One of the personal secretaries of the Archbishop of Cebu, Jose Palma, and Professor of Philosophy, Latin and Spanish at Pope John XXIII Seminary and San Carlos Seminary College currently a resident of the Archbishop's Palace and a certified life coach. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our speaker, Reverend Father Andre R. Ventanilla.
Father, ex hi, Father. I think there's a uh, there's a problem with our ears, or perhaps there's a problem with your microphone. So, um, if you can please check your audio, please, because it seems that uh, yeah, we are we're looking for somebody who can do sign language. Uh, I I think there's no video from you here. Sorry, there's no audio. There's no audio. There's no audio. Can you can you can you check your microphone? I think can you check the headsets where it was plugged, uh, where it's being plugged? Because yeah, Be because the, the our, our participants cannot hear you, Father. No, no still, no still. No. Wala pa rin. Can you? This? Yeah, that that's where we can we can hear you there. Yes. Okay, I'm yeah. removing my headset right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. So here in our, uh, can I continue now? Is it uh, is it okay? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear your father. You can proceed. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, in the next question, yung pandemic or we, that we experience here is now is a punishment or blessing. So, 68% says, yes, it's a blessing. And 32% says, hmm, it's a punishment. Okay, it's good. That's good. Next question, please. Next question. All right. So this one, what important life lessons has this pandemic taught you? So please choose the two most important. Okay, so the poll is continuing. All right, I'm still getting answers. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so ATM, our two most important lessons learned are, number one is to be spiritually ready and also to be health conscious. Then, to be grateful, to be finally secure, and to be secured in one's job. Okay, so thank you very much for um, for participating in the poll. So I think we can now proceed our slide. Okay. Okay. Right in back, can we still return? So yeah, more. The very first one. Yeah, there. Okay, thank you very much. So our topic for today is, of course, this is my love will see you through finding God in the midst of the storm. And I'm glad that... Um, in the polls that you have participated in, so first you have chosen uh, to say that still God blesses us in the midst of the storm, the midst of this pandemic, and then you were also um, trying. You were you were you also answered that uh, to be spiritual ready is your first choice, one of the lessons learned during this pandemic, and I think this is also very important. Why? As an introduction, let me say that we here in the Philippines and even in Asia, we Asians are deeply religious people. We are deeply rooted in what we believe in, in what in our faith, no matter if you're a Catholic or a non-Catholic, bastang importante, what we believe in, our faith has already imbibed us, all right, has already um, 
placed in us a very important thought in our mind or even in our being, in our personality. So please proceed to the next slide. Okay. So before I proceed, okay, let me give you the connection or the link or where is the handshake between religion, spirituality, and psychology? When I talk about psychology here, we refer, of course, to mental health. Kasi po, um, during these times, what is really important and what is the issue that we're facing right now is about mental health. Okay, About mental health and people are, people are actually um, there. Although in the social media, sabi nga ni Sir Bobot, that people are changing their profile pictures into black or whatsoever, or ranting every now and then. And so is the importance of psychology. But also, there is a handshake between psychology, religion, and spirituality. So let me give you these points. Number one, okay, please proceed. Both religion and spirituality can help a person tolerate stress by generating peace, purpose, and forgiveness. And that comes from the National Alliance on Mental Illness. No? Because religion, okay? religion is a promoter of peace. And of course, religion tells us of our purpose in this world. Why are we here? Why are we living? So religion tries to answer that one. And so is psychology. No? A psychology, if we are aware with, with, with what's happening with our mental health, then we can also question, what am I here for? Why am I suffering? Okay, next please. So from Pope John Paul II, a very known saint, whoever suffers from mental illness always bears God's image and likeness in himself, as does every human being. In his infinite love, God is always close to those who are suffering. Depressive illness can be a way to discover other aspects of oneself and new forms of encounter with God. So this is here. Finding God in the midst of the storm, that despite the sufferings that we're experiencing right now, God can still tell us, hey, you should look into the side of your life. What is this suffering telling you? What is this pandemic telling you? And lastly, next please. Existential commitment, including religiosity, can provide a sense of coherence, imparting deep meaning and an organizing framework to individual life experience. That's from a certain Aaron Antonovsky, who is actually a psychologist, an Israeli psychologist. So what do we mean by that? When we say existential commitment, okay, it's not just our individual commitment, our individual sense of purpose, but also we are in coherence with our fellow human beings. And since we are social beings, we are relational beings, we are a community, okay, we develop this kind of communal existential commitment, a sense of coherence. That is why this sense of coherence Okay. Um, let, let me simplify the term. It can be in a form of brotherhood. It can be a form of a fraternity, community. Okay. Will help us uplift each other. Will help us comfort each other. Will help us give consolation to each other. So that's the handshake between religion, spirituality, and psychology. All of these points, they have in common. Okay. So with that, let me now proceed. And since we're talking about religion here, okay, and other forms of other other forms of um, trying to help each other, we in the Commission on Youth, since I'm I'm the head of the young people in the Archdiocese of Cebu, so we also formed something. So can you also show the next uh, picture? Yung dalawa na. Yeah, these are actually pages, no? the Batan on Abag Center or the Back Hotline, and the Mental Health First Care Facebook page. Now, in the first slide, in the first picture, that back hotline, it's a 24-7 hotline for those who cannot actually express themselves but are suffering mental, uh, mental, mental difficulties of whatever sort. 
So here, somebody, a 24-hour-7 psychologist would be entertaining them, would be talking to them. Kasi naman po, not all of us are that courageous enough to express what we feel or to express what we think. And also, that mental health first care page, which you see in the picture below, is actually our way of flooding, no? flooding the social media with positive vibes. Because as we all know, as the social media, it's very filled up with information. And sometimes mga fake news, mga negative information. That's why we, as our form, as our way of um, expressing our solidarity with each other, solidarity with um, people suffering from mental health, we also develop this mental health first care page. And I hope also this is to encourage the companies that are here to also um, to also give the company an ambience of positivity. No? Kasi makakatulong po talaga eh. We don't know who among us are suffering mental illness right now. Sometimes you can just smile, but deep inside, we are suffering. No? But here, the ambience would really help us. Okay? What we see in the social media, uh, what we see in our company, in our surroundings, that would really help us console us a bit. No? Di naman po natin pwedeng sabihin that we can solve each other's problems or we can solve all the problems in the world, but at least to give each other, to offer each other a bit of help is already a great help. So let me proceed now. Okay, so here in this gospel from Matthew 8, 24 to 27, it says, Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he was asleep. Who's asleep here? Of course, it's Jesus. Natutulog siya, and there was a storm. Okay. Next. And then the disciples came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. This is a strong word. Meaning to say, mamamatay na po kami. Ikaw, natutulog ka lang. And then... Third, next, please. Then Jesus suddenly tells them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Okay? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. Pero see, the letters in red, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? I mean, after all, Lord, we are already dying, and then you suddenly tell us, Ba't kayo natatakot? Ha? Anyari? No? Anyari? What's happening? Are you not aware that we are perishing? And then here comes you telling us, but kayo natatakot? Obvious ba? Okay? But what did he do? He got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Next, please. Then the men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this whom even the winds and the sea obey? This is to tell us that there is a God, a big God who is behind everything. But it doesn't mean that we cannot be the source of consolation. The very fact that our Lord told them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? is also saying, Hoy, wag nyo nang dagdagan ang problema. No? Don't make the problem worse. Don't add to the problem by your fear. And the fear that he means here is the collective fear. No? The collective fear, the paranoia, huh? the paranoia that the disciples were experiencing. Because there was already an existing problem. And what was that existing problem? The storm. Okay? The storm already is the problem. But their fear added, added to the problem, worsened the problem. And Jesus said, why are you terrified? O you of little faith. Meaning to say, wait, don't add to the problem. And so Jesus came and solved the problem because Jesus knew that the problem was the storm and so he calmed the storm, thereby teaching the disciples a lesson. Okay? Yes, it's true that in this gospel, in this context, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is God, he takes care, but also he is also telling them that they have a responsibility, okay? That they are also part of the solution and they must be a part of the solution. They must contribute to the solution. And how would they contribute? That their collective 
fear should be minimized or that they may, they may help each other they may help each other in the process no gisingin natin si lord and then let's ask what what we can do but here comes the terrified people of course we can understand fear is always there okay fear is always there but we have to be courageous diba for those of you who have watched Mulan no itong bago lang na Mulan ngayon na nagtrending just this past few days diba the father of Mulan told Mulan okay being courageous does not mean you are without fear okay there is always fear but you have to stand up you have to be brave despite or in the midst of that fear so this is actually the context of my speech of my of my webinar of my talk right now or my sharing okay that yes i am talking about spirituality here i am talking about our dependence on god but this dependence on god is not only limited to our dependence on him but rather the love that we have for god must also be expressed in our love for neighbor in charity okay that we can contribute to the solution and being part of the solution is actually an act and even a commandment coming from god diba sabi ni lord love your god and love your neighbor okay and these two are compatible with each other next slide please okay so that is why okay that is why we also have to be aware no we also have to be aware of what's happening with us right now okay we have the problems we have the covid we have the pandemic but also at the same time individual problems are also running in our minds today okay and that's what we call the anxiety okay so ngayon po in our in the in view of mental health okay we are dealing with anxiety and there is such difference between anxiety and anxiety disorder okay. when we say anxiety disorder uh, uh, by the way you can have the slides after no we the anxiety disorder to simplify that is already the sickness okay pero most of us are experiencing the anxiety which is actually a normal reaction to stress or difficult times okay so pag anxious tayo, wag nating sabihin kaagad na we are actually suffering a sickness. Because anxiety disorder can be a result of cumulative anxieties. But when we are there to still solve that problem and help each other out, then we go directly to that anxiety. Okay? And always remember that even if we are suffering from anxiety we are anxious we are lonely we are bored or whatsoever okay it is actually a call a challenge to stand up for what we feel okay to stand up for what we feel and then little by little we get up and we try we try to row the boat in the midst of the storm next slide please okay So, it's okay to be anxious, okay? That's really normal. It's really okay to be anxious. So, don't be bothered by it. Next. Okay. Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7. How to overcome anxiety. Conquer in God's word. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay. Now I am feeding you with the word of God, but I am going to express that in details or how can we actually interpret that after. Next, please. Okay. So God doesn't want us carrying around worry. We can cast our cares and all of our anxiety on him. So first we are called to surrender our anxiety to Jesus. Second slide. Next, determine to obey God and how? God commands us not to be anxious about anything, but rather choose to trust in the Lord 
and not to lean on your own understanding. Okay. So where is this leaning on our own understanding coming from? Abangan ang susunod na kabanata. Next slide. Start praying. Maybe some of us have forgotten to pray. But also, maybe some of us are just beginning to pray even if, or rather, are only beginning to pray when we are already empty-handed. Hindi po. That's not good. Because God is not an answering machine. Okay? God is not an answering machine. He is also a person. Meaning to say, we can talk to Him okay, about what we feel, even if we are happy, sad, lonely, anxious. Any feeling that we have now, we surrender to the Lord through prayer because it produces God's peace that will protect our hearts and minds from anxious thoughts and feelings. Okay? Surrender to God. Next talk. Meditate on God's word. Okay? How many among you are still reading your Bible? Or marami naman po ano eh. We are already fed up with information in the social media. Okay? Instead of listening to yung mga negative na mga thoughts, why not browse in through mga videos that are actually inspiring? Okay? And also the Bible, it's filled with beautiful and praiseworthy verses about God's character. We need to read scripture that reminds us of His faithfulness through the ages. And if we can see, hindi naman po lahat ng nasa scriptures are actually God, God only telling the people what to do. It's also the other way around. People from their own experiences, okay, telling God about what they feel, no? about how lonely they are, how angry they are, how frustrated they are. And that is also what the Bible is all about. Hindi lang po yun, no? It's not just God telling us what to do or God telling us, uh, or God inspiring us, but it is also the voice of people, different people. People like, for example, Jeremiah who was young and stuttering, Job, no? Who lost everything. And then there are also lamentations, people who are angry at God, who are frustrated, telling also God about their feelings. Okay? Meaning to say, the stories of the people in the Bible are also our own stories. And from that story, God answers them also. Okay? So baka kasi po yung iniisip lang natin na it's just God telling. No, in the Bible, it's also the people telling God about everything about what they feel. So I encourage you to also read the Bible. Many of the stories makakarelate po tayo dyan. Next talk. So divert attention from yourself to others, right? If you set your attention on other people, your problems will grow smaller, okay? So meaning to say there is an outreach. When your efforts are focused on helping others and living out your God-given purpose in the world, the less time you'll have to stress and worry. Okay, next. Okay, sige po. Next pa. Again, next, please. Okay. Uh, Sir Bobot. Okay, anyway. Yes, Father. Yeah. Okay, I think you have posted the wrong slide, the wrong presentation. No, but anyway, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I can begin from here. No worries. No worries. Don't worry about what I've said. Anything here can be covered with. Okay. So given what I have said earlier, these are five, okay? These are five things or five, five points that are telling us about God being there. Pero yung hindi po natin nalalaman kasi most of us are actually saying, ah, si Lord na naman. Alam na namin yan. We know that. But there is always a connection between Okay? There is always a connection between what God says and what we do. Okay? So, the things that are I'm trying to, that I will try to um, share with you now, 
are actually the detailed expressions of what we have just heard. Okay? So what are the remedies for your anxious mind? Okay, number one is slow down. Okay? So when we are anxious about everything, okay, our thoughts raise, our heart pounds, our breathing accelerates, this makes it difficult to think clearly and make healthy decisions. Okay? So slow things down. Next talk. Next picture, please. And then come to your senses, okay? Slow down and come to your senses. Meaning to say, realize, realize and introspect what is really happening. Okay, what is really the problem here? No? Yung fear po ba natin? Yung COVID po ba? Or whatsoever, right? Sige po, next slide. Do also a reality check and next. The reality check. Next slide. Release the critic in you. Okay. Do a reality check. What are you feeling right now? Okay. And there is also the saying that you acknowledge the emotion but don't become the feeling. Okay. You acknowledge the emotion that you have but do not become the feeling. Simply acknowledge because you as a person, you are more than what you feel. And also release the critic in you. Okay. Release the critic in you. It's good to let go. In prayer, it's good also to let go. All right? Job was angry at God and he even shouted at God for that. But that's okay. Kasi yun po po eh. In front of the Lord, we are actually naked in front of God. No, He knows what we feel. He knows what we think. He knows what's in our hearts. And also, kung alam ni Lord yun, dapat Subukan din natin alamin, intindihin, understand ourselves as well. Okay? Yes, I am feeling this way, but I am more than my feelings. Me as a person, I am more than my feelings. Next slide, please. Channel your anxious energy and next. Lie down and look up. In other words, find time to rest. Find time to divert yourselves. Okay, find time to divert yourselves and look for things that can actually comfort you. But when we look for the things that can actually comfort us, be sure no, that these things are worth the comfort. Okay? Baka mamaya, there will be things na Hindi naman, we just think that they are comfortable to us, pero hindi naman po pala. No? So, in other words, like, if you let, if you go back to your ex, akala nyo na siguro komportable, pero in the end, kayo rin pala masasaktan, di wag na. No? <laughs> wag na. Next po. Alright. Listen, and, and, next. Practice five by five. So this practice five by five is actually coming to our senses, our five senses, no? Yung sight, hearing, smelling, taste, and feeling. So go back to where you are. Sometimes I, I know, I, I feel some of you, siguro sa stress nothing sa work, we are just like um, walking brains na lang, no? Our head, our head aches, no? Our head aches, tapos we are like, we are so heavy, you know, ang bigat natin, no? Plus, ang bigat pa ng weight natin, obis pa, tapos mabigat pa yung iniisip, no? bugat pa ng gipang huna-huna. So we are just like broken, uh, we are just like walking brains. And we don't take time to feel ourselves anymore, no? We don't, we don't take time to see or, or to see or to just um, to, cher to cherish or to, to feel the air that we breathe. Sabi nga nila, now at this time, the, the nice thing that this um, pandemic has brought us is Mother Earth is actually trying to rest and we are inhaling um, fresher air. I didn't say na fresh, talaga fresher lang siguro than before. Next slide. Right? So know your triggers and here. Know your triggers and nurture patience. Now these are very connected. If you know what triggers you, you will know how to be patient. Because you already know na there are some things that can trigger your mind, that can trigger you to be angry. Maybe there is somebody from your workplace na 
pag nakikita mo yung pagmumukha niya, you remember your ex, no? Na kinagagalitan mo until now. So now, when you see that face again, so you remember, ay, hindi yan talaga. It's not, he is not the reason why I am angry. He is just a carbon copy of that person whom I'm angry at. So I better compose myself, no? And be patient with what I'm experiencing right now. In the same way that Jesus is telling us in what I told you earlier, in the gospel, Jesus tells the disciples to focus on the storm. Because what is triggering them, what is receiving their problem is their fear. Okay? So once they know, Jesus telling them, why are you afraid? It's like telling them, huy, ang trigger nyo is yung fear ninyo. You are not focused on the problem. Okay? So I want you to be focused on two things, the problem, and since you need me, focus on me too. Okay? This fear... Oh, this fear is just secondary. No? I didn't say that it is not important because fear is also important. Because fear will help us think, eh? why, why, what's happening? Why am I afraid? It will help you think. So it's also important in one way. But it can also trigger you to, um, to blur your mind and to think of things that are not the solution to your problem. So know your triggers, and by knowing your triggers, you nurture patience as well. Okay, next one. Okay, and be mindful also of simple tasks. Okay, be mindful of tasks that are actually simple, such as walking, eating, answering emails. And when we're anxious, we feel out of control. Being mindful of a simple task helps remind us that we're in control of our choices. So choose a task and imagine it's your first time doing it and dip into the richness of your life. In other words, be where you are, okay? Be in that situation that you are. Be realistic, okay? What is here? Next book. Okay. Now, in one of his audiences, so si Pope Francis was actually mentioning three enemies of the gift. Okay, so the gift is our gift, our being us. Okay, and it, this can also um, refer to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will actually help us to overcome all these things. But merong mga blockages, merong mga detriments, there are hindrances, and these hindrances are actually the three enemies. Okay, walang say say ang lahat ng sinabi ko, no? There is there's no use with what I'm saying if these three enemies are within you right now. So what are they? Number one is the narcissism. When we say narcissism, di ba nakita po natin yung puging-pugi ka sa sarili mo, yung gandang-ganda ka sa sarili mo that you adore, no? that you adore who you really are. But in also in our world today, in the world of mental health, there is also what we call narcissism. So what is this narcissistic tendency in mental health? Na you drive attention to yourself. Okay? How? How do you drive attention to yourself? You shout in your Facebook, okay? You shout out in your Facebook, you amplify, no? You amplify your problem by shouting out in the Facebook kahit alam niyo naman po na kahit alam niyo naman po na maliit lamang to na problema because there are people like that no there are people like that we have to be aware there are people who would like to draw attention to themselves by creating a problem which is not really a problem okay so kung ganyan po yung ating mindset we are causing everybody to worry we are not we are not working as a community okay we are not trying to help because we are not trying to take part of the solution because we want others to see us. Ay, kawawa naman siya. Ala, nag-post si ano, kawawa naman siya. Okay? Next, please. Victimhood. Very connected with, with narcissism. Yung pabebeng-pabebe ka talaga. No? No, yung, you, you want others na kayo na lang din yung tignan. Okay? You, you play the victim, in other words. Of course, you know that. Mga, mga HR people know yung mga pa-victim. And this is what is happening in the social media right now. Also, marami. Many are thinking 
na okay lang sila pero in the end it's just they are trying to amplify they are just amplifying the problem by being or by playing the victim and lastly pessimism okay we are too negative yung bang sasabihin natin oh, wala na tong daratnan this is it wala na ako i cannot i cannot i cannot cope up anymore i am weak already no nothing so when these three are present in us they express a failure to recognize god's love in the midst of the storm okay when we are so narcissistic when we keep thinking of ourselves when we see that everything is useless no nothing wala po lahat ng sinabi ko will be withered away so what is the point of me telling you this telling you all this although we are deeply spiritual people we are religious people but our spirituality can never no never our spirit spirituality can never be separated from our social responsibility and part of that social responsibility that we have is to create in us a framework of coherence no to be able to contribute individually to our solution okay our 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 solution here ano what is our communal na hakbang because the problem here is of course the pandemic the problem here are the people who are suffering no and we no it's a call for us because we have different we are actually we have um different levels of tolerance okay of pain tolerance so tayo po na who are actually strong okay we can determine who are actually strong let us exercise let us be more let us be stronger rather for one another and help those who are still trying to cope up yun naman pong mga nagta-try to cope up no yun namang medyo paningin po nila eh medyo weak sila of course acknowledge that no there's nothing wrong with acknowledging our being weak there's nothing wrong with acknowledging our failures but also try no try na magpatulong din po kayo no magpatulong no? patabang sa da no dili lang nga permita ang victim not just that we are we, we are the victim but we try to help no we try to help each other okay we try to meet to meet in the middle all of us those who are strong and those who are trying to cope up okay let's meet each other so that we can actually contribute and this is what our spirituality what jesus wants us yes jesus tells us i am here I will still bless you, no? Despite the pandemic, everything here is a blessing. Only if we see it as a blessing, only if our perspective will tell us this is a blessing. And for those who think, no, that this is a punishment, it cannot be a punishment coming from God. Coming from God, no, no, because the Lord does not want to punish us. But coming from us, maybe yes, maybe yes. Tayo naman po ang nag-contribute nito eh, di ba? The, pun the, the punishment, if we are experiencing, if, if you say, if you say that there is a punishment happening with this pandemic, maybe yes, but one thing I assure you, it does not come from God. The punishment does not come from God. It comes from us. It comes from our failure to be socially responsible. It comes from our failure to be environment friendly. It comes from our failure to be a true brother to one another. It comes from our failure to be, huh? to be more, to be more in the priority of what is really essential: health concerns or anything else. One thing I've learned in this world, especially in this pandemic, why are countries? investing more on weapons to destroy pero bakit walang nagii-invest sa healthcare for pandemics okay so in the poll that you answered financially secure tapos meron kayong mga 
uh, iba pang mga ma, ma, mga inanswer dyan na mga priorities, we've learned something. That there is actually a thing called priority. And that priority can also reflect how socially responsible are we for one another. That is why it is unfair to tell that it is God punishing us. But maybe the fair thing to say is it is we who are punishing one another. And this webinar hopefully will make us realize that God's call for love and God's love is also expressed in our love for one another. And one of the expressions of our love for one another is to help console each other, those who are suffering from mental health, even in the way we talk, in the way we approach, in the little things that we do in the office, our little show of concern for one another. As I've said earlier, we do not need, no? we do not need to do great things for one. If all our little things can be cumulative, that would be more than enough for all of us to be consoled. So Jesus does not tell you, Jesus does not tell us, do great things. No. He tells us, do the best that you can to be of help, to be a part of the solution. Next slide, please. So with that, let us come into prayer. And when in the prayer, we will realize also how we value one another. How these points of anxiety, of trying to console each other in the social media, you know, giving positive vibes, calling one another, nangangamusta in our teams or in our group of friends, we may pray, dear God, I thank you that you are my shepherd. You guide me, you protect me, and you give me your peace. You are the one who restores my soul. You know my weaknesses and the times I've caved into fear. Now in my weakness, I choose to re rely on your strength. And by your power, move me from fear to faith. Okay? As I turn my fear ever to you, use it for good in my life to remind me of my need for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And with this prayer, may we also be empowered of our need for one another. Thank you. And this is the way that we can see God, the love of God in the midst of the storm. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Father, for a very, very inspiring and uh, uplifting session. So I think we still have a few time uh, for the question and answer. So what you can do is please use the Q&A box, not the chat box for your questions so we can easily take uh, note of it. So, uh, so I'm not sure if we still have the time for the poll. Okay, so let's proceed with the poll. Okay. So have, please have, have your cell phones ready. So please uh, go to Mentimeter. So. Sorry, it's a Zoom poll, yeah. So Father, can you can you share to us your your wisdom on on the repeat of the pulse? Okay. Now after this, I, I think you already answered that one. No, you already answered uh, this one the first time. Now after this this webinar, I would like to see if there is a change. Okay, if there is a change to what you've answered. Okay, or what what progress have been made? Okay, so I think we already have. Okay, good. So still, to be spiritually ready, 
Now to be health conscious, to be grateful, very nice. To be financially secure, no, wala na yung financial, no, ay okay na sa inyo. No, I mean here and to be secured in one's job. Okay. Now you will re you will realize you will you will realize na there is a movement, but actually the movement comes here. Um, trying, no, siguro ang iba sa inyo talaga to be spiritual ready. But I would like to make you realize that all of these are actually important. No? All of these are actually important. There is a need to balance. Okay? But of course, to be spiritually ready is there because our faith is there. Eh? But hopefully, ito pong faith natin, no? ito pong faith natin, the goal here is sana po, my dear uh, people who are listening, it will also reflect on how you want to be financially secure, how you want to be health conscious, how you want to be secured in your job, and how you want to be grateful. In other words, okay, in other words, let our spirituality, let God reflect in every corner of our lives. Okay? So thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Father. So at this point, uh, we will entertain some questions. Uh, just a reminder, please use the Q&A box and not the chat box for your questions so we can easily take note of it. And for those who would like to ask their questions live, just click on the raise hand icon and our technical director will allow you to open your video and audio. So uh, let's check if we have a uh, few questions here. Okay, so uh, we have uh, we have a father. We have a question here. Yes, Paul. Uh, the question is, uh, how can we send our spiritual comforts to those in isolation in a way to uplift their relations to God and to family, community? So uh, please tell Father. We are also from Fatima Parish of Basak Mandawi City. They're so proud of you, Father. Wow! Thank you very much. Okay, so here, the answer here is this, social media, okay? I know we fear, we, 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 we want to go to the isolation centers, but the social media is actually a very useful tool. And I've done it, um, I've done it a couple of times, no? Meron lang coming can create, we just created a small group, no? I and my classmate who is a counselor and the other one is also a, um, a doctor, classmate po nung, nung high school po. So the other one is already a doctor and the other one is already a uh, is already a guidance counselor. So the three of us group together na if ever lang na meron kaming kakilala whom we know in the social media, no? They we can actually talk to each other. We can actually talk to each other there they being in the isolation facility and through Zoom or through our uh, Facebook uh, video call. We just talk to each other like that. So um you, we, as I've said earlier, we don't need a big number, a, a large group to do that. We can do that on our own, in our own simple way. And we've used actually the social media like Facebook video call. Tapos yun naman pong, nag, yun naman pong tinawagan namin, of course, that will replicate. They will refer us to other persons. And that is actually already rippling the effect of... Um, the good that we are also trying our best to do and i hope i've given you an answer thank you thank you thank you father um another question father um can you share your experience in going to vicente soto in in dealing with uh, covid positive patients in the past ah okay so, yeah a uh, vicente soto no or no i have ever, not gone to I have not gone to a tawag nito, to any um, facility with with the with COVID patients, but yes, I've talked to COVID patients with uh, through the social media. Okay. Because it's not allowed, naman even the hospitals wouldn't allow us to go there. Okay. But yes, we we actually did that, and then um, I'll just I'll not I'll not mention along what specific facility was that now, but. Um, they told us that in that specific facility, they are also trying their 
uh, best no hindi lang po sila they are not just dependent on what the facility is um doing there or or offering them but they too in their own way they would help in like for example fetching the water or they will help in making up the bed so what is the point of telling you this no even those who are in the isolation facilities no people there are also trying to be positive no not not the positive with with the covid pero positive deep inside in their attitude to be able to be of help to one another so yun po the even if they are already covid patients what's nice in that facility that that i have talked to the patients with no they are also trying their best to lift each others to lift each others up and how much more all of us who are listening here who are not even um hindi yung hindi po tayo nahawahan ng covid the more we need to lift each others up diba nakakahiya naman po um, mauwaw po tanga katong mga naa sa those who are in the isolation facility even though they already have the the disease with them but they are still trying to help each other how much more we who have not been uh who have who have not uh, uh who nga wala matakdan of the disease right uh father we have another question from marites abundiente and this, she says how do we know that god is speaking to us or answering our prayers okay the, uh, aside from the prayer aside from prayer ha, aside from prayer aside from the inspiration god also answers our prayers through the people around us and that is even more important okay that is even more important because god uses people as instruments okay why am i saying this because um most of the time most of the time no we think that god answers us directly but no even in the bible god does not answer directly he uses other people he uses the prophets he 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 inspires other people to actually remind other people of what he's telling us but here also the same the same thing goes with in our present situation there are people around us whom we have to also look at as people who are actually god's instruments and well this is also a reality minsan po yung pong ayaw natin sometimes god speaks to them too and we are not just open to listen so be open to listen also to other people they are also instruments of god thank you thank you father <laughs> we have another question from miss grace uh it says here how to remain inspired amidst the pandemic okay be positive of course the classical example would also would a classical example would be to look at the glass half full and not half empty okay pero meron meron i don't know if you're if for the hr i think you already know that no you look the glass half full and half empty but there is one one witty answer to that also at least it has water <laughs> ma half full siya or ma half empty at least it has the water in it so you can still drink from the water in that glass okay father we have another question from a participant who has so many questions and her name is anonymous attendee so her first question is father how would you know that one is already depending too much on god that it becomes unhealthy okay so well if you don't one example if you don't listen to other people anymore you just keep on saying na sige i will just wait for for what god is telling me but if i don't listen to other people anymore that is already a sign that we are too dependent on god okay and that is not actually a true dependence on god no it is it's not anymore being dependent on god it is actually rebelling against god because god does not tell us to do that no okay the dependence that god wants is of course we retain that love for him but in the same way we will not separate the love for neighbor and part of our expression of our love for neighbor is to listen also to the advice coming from the other okay thank you father we have last question from from another anonymous attendee so uh, the question is there are other people who preaches and we appreciate that 
But what if it becomes critical of others already? How do we deal with these people, Father? Okay. Um, there is what we call the constructive criticism. Okay. When 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 we criticize, criticism comes in two ways: the what we call constructive criticism and the destructive criticism. Now. Destructive criticism is when you destroy already personalities. And like, for example, the character shaming, yun na po yun eh. That's already destructive criticism. But when there is a constructive criticism, you just try to point out the wrong and not attacking the person. But the constructive criticism also works in two ways, ha? Okay? It works, number one, from me to you, okay? From me to you, I who is doing the criticism, and the other and the other work is this, and the other way is how I receive that criticism. Okay, with regards to the person who criticizes, wala na po tayo magagawa jan. Okay, but with you who is receiving the criticism, if ever there is something that you can do, whether you take that criticism as something that for you to grow or for you to be down, okay? That is coming from you. That's something that you can do. But if there is a th if there is anything that you can do to the person who criticized you by approaching him gently and telling him the uh, and telling him what's wrong, that's also good. But also remember that you who received the criticism, there is something that you can do also to how you receive the criticism. Thank you. Okay, Father, um, Miss Attendee has another question, anonymous attendee. And she's, she's asking, like, despite of the problem that we face today, especially COVID-19, is this also the will of God in order for us to be close to Him? To be close to Him, yes. Yes. Anything, any, and, and, and anything that does not harm us is really the will of God. Pero kung sasabihin po natin na ginamit niya yung ginamit niya yung 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 covid he really intended the covid no i wouldn't believe that pero since nandiyan na si covid well nandiyan na si covid no god in order for us to be close to him would also tell us well you may at least uh see the situation that you are in right now okay but that does not mean na sinadya talaga ni lord na gawin yung covid no anything that can harm us god wouldn't do that to us Okay, but he uses mga not so pleasing situations that we are already in right now in order to be close to him. Yeah, that one is true. Thank you, Father. And in the interest of time, we can entertain with the last question. This question is coming from Mary Law Angelanida and says, What best spiritual advice can you give to everyone during these difficult times? Okay. In are, are, are we all Cebuanos here? Majority, majority. Majority. Okay. In Cebuano, okay, this is the, the this is the, the advice that I can give. The three letter A's. Okay. Ampo, amping, ug ambit. Ampo means to pray. Pray that this will end. Especially that today is the birthday of Mama Mary. She is here with us. Amping means to take care of ourselves because we cannot just remain being up we cannot just keep on praying without also taking care of ourselves so try to follow uh, try to try to follow sincerely and with a positive attitude yung mga protocols yung mga wearing of masks and lastly ambit share share what you can do share every positive vibe that you can share in the social media okay Share if you can still be generous and if you can if you can still have uh, something for uh, other people with regards to their um, physical needs, their material needs, no. So anything that you can share. So these three letter A's: ampo, amping, and ambit. Because ampo can never be separated from amping and ambit. Remember, Saint Paul says, "Charity without good works, our faith without good works, is not faith." They are compatible with each other. Wow, thank you, uh, thank you so much, Father. So we have to remember Ampo, 
Amping, Ambit, Way Ayuda. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much, brother. So, uh, yeah, um, we have covered a lot this afternoon. So, thank you so much, Father. So, to officially close the webinar, we would like to call in our president of PMAP, Cebu Chapter, the president and COO of Cebu General Services Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Grace S. Iligan, PhD. Hi. Uh, yes, good afternoon. My video, my signal is so bad. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, I really agree with Sir Robert. It's really indeed an inspiring and uplifting session this afternoon. So, uh, Father, uh, in behalf of Team uh, Cebu, I would like to give you this uh, virtual certificate for uh, your insightful conduct as the Ms. O. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, let me read this one. Uh, this certificate is given to Reverend Father Andre R. Vintanilla for his insightful conduct as a speaker of this webinar. My life will see you through finding God in the midst of the storm. In Pima, uh, to PIMAP Cebu members and to other participants. Given this day, September 8, 2020, signed by yours truly, Grace Iligan, 2020, Kimap Cebu President. Uh, again, Father, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was so inspiring. And uh, thank you for spending your time with us. Okay, thank you, Miss Grace. Uh, I think there's a problem with uh, with your. We have something um, now. Yeah, you can see it again, Miss 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 Grace. I think your internet doesn't. I mean, requires more blessings from God. <laughs> yes, I am so challenging, sir. But can you hear me now? Yes. Am yes, I yes. now? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know where, which portion uh, did you able to hear, Father? Anyway, uh, I would like to repeat it, uh, Father. In behalf of uh, uh, PIMAP Cebu, I would like to give this uh, virtual certificate to you, uh, Reverend Father Andre Arventalia, for your insightful conduct as a speaker of this webinar. My love will see you through, and finding God in the midst of the storm. To PIMAP Cebu members and to other participants given this day, September 8, 2020, signed by yours truly, 2020 PIMAP Cebu President. And again, Father, uh, we are so grateful to have you this afternoon. Thank you so much. It was indeed a very interesting and very uplifting uh, session. Hopefully we will be able to uh, use everything that we learned this afternoon as we continue to battle this pandemic so in behalf of Team Up Cebu, thank you so much, Father, because we know you're so busy because it's Mother Mary's birthday, but you still accepted the invitation. So we sincerely thank you for that. <laughs> thank you so much, Miss Grace. Thank you so thank much, you everyone. Much. So uh, we might have another webinar in the future. My internet can get you through. <laughs> yes, sir, but I think that's- Thank you, Miss Grace. Uh, by the way, okay, sir, but, so uh, I, uh, thank you also, Father Andre, for the learning we gained today. And of course, it is indeed timely that we celebrate the birth of Mother Mary today, September 8th. For updates of our upcoming events, sir, such but, as this workshop and free sir, webinars, but, please check all social sir, media but, accounts. Hi, Sir Bot. Hi, Miss Grace. Yes. yes. Let me give you also oh. uh, the virtual certificate because I cannot really forego without giving you the virtual certificate. Okay, of PIMAP Cebu, I would like to give this virtual certificate to, to you, Mr. Justado Gyud, Justado Gyud, Bobot Kudoy, for your masterful facilitation as moderator and host for this webinar. My love will see you through 
finding God in the midst of the storm given to PMAP Cebu members and to other participants this date, September 8, 2020, signed by yours truly, Gracie Ligan, 2020 PMAP Cebu president. Sir Bot, again, thank you so much. Uh, the internet is so challenging. There was uh, there were a couple of challenges, but my God, I'm so happy we discovered that we have again another very good moderator and host. So you're definitely added to our list, and I hope you will not decline the so next invitation. Okay, we're really looking forward of having you again. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Miss Grace. Thank you for uh, this the vir virtual certificate. <laughs> And uh, also, let's sir, Bob, just bear with me. Huh? I just want to say thank you to the Avengers because uh, any webinars will never be possible without this team. And I know uh, as we now are returned, uh, we are started reporting back to work, but these people are still with, uh, uh, with PMAP and they still continue to choose to give their time to the organization. So really thank them enough actually but uh in a in a normal way i would just like to say thank you so much avengers team uh sir jm our technical host sir neil our technical director uh ipp pinky for our uh it support miss odette kambonga our slide master and mom uh, trusty ann also our she is currently the Q&A master this afternoon. And at the same time, she's the one who prepared all the slides. So again, thank you. And thank you, of course, and Telecare for partnering with PMAP all this time since we started the webinars. And uh, it is also appropriate lang to say thank you also for GSI, a company, for sponsoring this afternoon as well. Okay, thank you, Miss Grace. Uh, again, you're you're in a, you're doing statue dance right now. So uh, <laughs> for updates of our upcoming events, yeah. So are you back? Okay, you can continue what you said, Miss Grace. Sir Bob, I think my my internet signal is so bad. <laughs> okay, I'm. Anyway, I, I tried to turn off my camera, but again, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. So let's uh, remember that uh, the three A's that God is saying us. So good afternoon and thank you and happy birthday, Mama Mary. Back to you, Sir Bob. Okay, so let me do this again. So um, for more updates and events such as this, work, this workshop, you can check our Facebook account, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. And please don't forget to like and follow PMAP Cebu on social media accounts and make sure to make it a habit to visit our PMAP website, www.pmapcebu.com, where you can also view recordings of past webinars and see updates of the latest labor and other labor-related government uh, advisories. And October 7 is a very special day. Aside from the fact that it's the Feast of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, PMAP Cebu will be having a regional conference October 7 until October 9. So do you want to know what's more in store? Well, check the video. Today we take upon ourselves the challenge of responding to the needs and realize the vision that Forming human capital, reaching out, embracing all that's new. It's the dawn of a boundless age. It's a quest to rise above the rest, empowered by our tribe. To succeed among the best, our quest to wisdom first, great service all the way. Let be what show us how. to become the final
finest that we can be. It is a quest to rise above the rest, empowered by our drive. To succeed among the best, our customers come first, bring service all the way. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for, for your participation. Once again, this is Bobot Kadoy. I wish you a pleasant day to all of you and stay well as well. And uh, we're looking forward to, you know, to a fruitful holiday tomorrow. Thank you.